Now, Simone de Beauvoir, undisputedly one of the most influential intellectuals of the 20th century, however, recently released personal diaries and letters to her lovers offer a whole new light to this philosopher, writer and feminist. De Beauvoir's autobiogra autobiographies, it appears, may have hidden quite a bit about her own philosophical beginnings, her triumphs, failures and her relationships. Well, philosopher and author Kate Kirkpatrick, who has just published a new book, Becoming Beauvoir, it joins us now. Miss Kirkpatrick, thanks so much for your time. Can I start by just asking you more about these letters and diaries? Uh, you know, how were they released and is that what sparked you to write a new biography about uh, de Beauvoir? Well, what sparked me to write a new biography about Beauvoir, um, I suppose, is difficult to, to isolate in a single moment because I did my doctorate on the philosophy of Jean-Paul Sartre, uh, especially his early philosophy uh, up to being in nothingness. And I found... Um, many influences on his philosophy uh, that uh, were not very studied in the English language. And in, so when Beauvoir's uh, Cahier de Jeunesse, her student diaries, uh, were published in French in 2008, um, I think uh, some academics studied them for the, the philosophical content that they had. Um, but uh, it, I think what they show is that actually before Beauvoir even met Sartre, she was concerned with similar, similar philosophical questions, questions that became famous for being existentialist questions. Uh, and um, so it was actually the philosophical originality in this very early Beauvoir text that made me think uh, th the story of her life might be worth reconsidering. Um, and then when her letters to Claude Lanzmann uh, were sold to Yale last year, uh, th that was uh, an additional new source, I thought, that would contribute to a kind of re-evaluation. Indeed, and all these uh, recent texts, they do seem to offer a new light to Simone de Beauvoir. And one thing that it looks like her autobiographies kind of hid a lot of her triumphs. And, you know, for someone who is now, you know, an icon of feminism, that seems quite surprising. Uh, you know, how do you see it? So I think it is surprising, and it's perplexed uh, scholars working on Beauvoir for quite some time. It's actually angered many feminists. Why would this groundbreaking woman uh, conceal her own ingenuity and her own contributions? Um, but I think that Beauvoir was a, had a very sophisticated approach to literature, and uh, I, I almost wonder whether autobiography is the right classification for what she was doing in um, in the text that we call her autobiographies, because I think she had quite a political motivation in writing them, which was to help other women see um, the kinds of ways uh, that that becoming a woman is constrained by certain social expectations. Uh, so she didn't promise to keep the autobiographical pact, uh, to tell her reader everything or, you know, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Uh, she said explicitly that there were some uh, some inevitable omissions. Indeed, there were um, and her I philosophical think just now we're starting to understand. Um, indeed, yeah. her philosophical yeah. reflections on her becoming and, and, and her work in general. Her, you know, many debate whether she was an author, philosopher. Um, but you mentioned there as well Claude Landsman, and they are the la latest letters we got were on this uh, lover across in the US. And that's put into question this whole uh, relationship with Jean-Paul Sartre, which has dominated much of what we read about Simone de Beauvoir. Yes, and I think the student diaries uh, also show new light into that because in the in the account of the famous Pacte du Louvre, we have this story of uh, people who met each other and immediately occupied an unparalleled place in each other's lives. And there's a sense in which that's true because intellectually they continue to be each other's critics and to be uh, the kind of... Uh, the iron that sharpens intellectual iron uh, for 51 years. But the romantic nature of the relationship is widely misunderstood. It was deeply dissatisfying to her on several, several fronts. And uh, so I think the romantic relationship actually ended much sooner than most people think. Do you think, just briefly, that it's fair that all these, you know, what she, she personally had decided to keep private, that they've now been made public? So this is uh, a disturbing question for a biographer. So in in Beauvoir's Cahier de Jeunesse, her student notebooks, you know, there was a there was a note that she wrote t uh, saying uh, th that it's a, a kind of violation to read um, what is written on these pages. And I think uh, the reason that I feel that it is a worthwhile thing to do is because this is a woman whose intellectual contribution to 20th century thought uh, is. Um, 
just immense. I mean, the second sex shaped feminist movements around the world. Her own philosophy shaped existentialism. And I think that the story of her life has a lot to tell us about how women's lives are represented. Um, and so it's still worth looking into the details. Indeed, and I, I've heard you say before that, you know, biographies offer us, you know, a reflection on the world we live in. And indeed, reading Becoming Beauvoir, we see that many of uh, the things that Beauvoir struggled with in becoming who she wanted to be compared to who she should be because of society, they're very much still alive today, many of the arguments in this book. Absolutely. I think, you know, this is one of the things that I found fascinating when I was doing the research for the book. Um, and I think one of the reasons that, that other readers have found it interesting is because Beauvoir was constantly accused of being out of date uh, because she thought feminism was still relevant. She faced the accusation in 1949. She faced it uh, in the 60s when she published Les Belles Images, uh, when she was trying to say, let's look at the world from women's point of view. Let's hear what women have to say. Uh, critics uh, would say, this is boring, this is irrelevant. Um, but it's much of what women had to say in 1949 and in, 19, this, in the 1960s uh, is similar to the problems that women still face. And indeed, I have to say, reading it myself, I think it's still very relevant. In 2019, Ms. Uh, Kate Kirkpatrick, thanks so much for taking time out to tell us a bit more about uh, the background to your biography, Becoming a Beauvoir.